and welcome to Wendy TV. You are watching uh, Manage Your Money. This is the show where we answer all your questions about savings and investments. Cash is no longer king, interest rates are falling and stock markets remain volatile. In such a situation, how should you tweak or build a portfolio? What are the best ways to make your money work for you? Over the next 30 minutes, our experts will piece together the investment puzzle. Let's welcome in our guest who's going to help us answer all the queries. We have uh, Suresh Sadgopan. He's a certified financial planner and his company is Ladder Financial, Ladder 7 Financial Serv uh, Advisories. Uh, let's also now go straight to our caller. We have with us uh, Mr. Bhaskaran, who's uh, a retired bank executive who's joining us on the phone line. Uh, Mr. Bhaskaran, good afternoon. What's your question? Uh, good afternoon. My name is Bhaskaran. Uh, see, my question is like this. I am having a pension of about 41,000 rupees, then monthly rental of about 11,000. I also have an investment of 35 lakhs with uh, an interest earning of about 10.75%. Uh, I am paying 75,000 rupees as tax, between 70 and 75. I just want to know is there any way I can reduce my tax liability? I have an investment of PPF uh, over a period of six years. I have invested about 10 lakhs, uh, and which is also, uh, of course, the interest is totally tax-free. I need your advice for reducing the tax liability. Right. Uh, Suresh, uh, what would you advise uh, Mr. Bhaskaran to do? His main, major goal is reducing his tax liability. Yeah. Uh, from what I understand, I think he has uh, sufficient cash flows. So cash flows are not really a problem. Uh, Mr. Baskaran, you are actually concerned about the tax. Uh, there are two ways by which we can actually address that. One is actually uh, looking at the potential tax saving instruments and uh, uh, looking at section 80C, 80D and so on. So what is not known is whether you are taking full advantage of 80C, which is about 1.5 lakhs. Also, we are not aware whether uh, you have invested in 80D instrument and whether you really have requirement for medical insurance. If you really require uh, medical insurance for yourself and your family, for your spouse essentially, uh, you can go all the way up to 30,000, you can pay that premium and that can be a deduction. The other very, very important way of saving tax is by uh, slightly reallocating the existing FDs into potentially other instruments which can, which come under, uh, uh, you can say, a much more benign uh, tax treatment. The one that I have in mind for you is a debt mutual fund. See, in the case of a debt mutual fund, it is also 100% in debt. There is no equity component at all. So you should be comfortable in the sense that you are investing in FD and you want an instrument which has low risk. So in that sense, debt mutual funds are also an instrument which are low in the risk profile. But if you hold it for three years, the effective taxation is going to be in the ballpark of maybe 3 to 5%. The reason for that is uh, uh, whatever returns you are getting from uh, debt mutual fund comes under capital gain tax treatment and after uh, three years it comes under long term capital gain treatment. So suffice to say that you will be paying say something like 5% effective tax instead of 30% uh, or 20% whatever slab you happen to come in. So that is one of the other suggestions that I would give you so to bring down the tax. Uh, what about ELSS? Um, we don't know what he has put in that one and a half lakh rupee um, uh, 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 tax saving instruments you can invest in. Um, uh, how much will ELSS help him in cutting his tax? And what about the NPS? You can invest about 50,000 more over and above 1.5 lakhs to reduce your uh, tax incidence. Yeah, uh, that's, a, that's a good point, Anisha. I mean, uh, in his case, he does not have any exposure, at least uh, from what we understand, he does not have any exposure in uh, equity-oriented instruments at all. So ELSS may be an instrument of choice from his standpoint uh, for two reasons. One is it can bring in certain equity exposure. And secondly, uh, uh, it can also uh, be available to him after three years, unlike in the case of an F, uh, PPF, which is a com uh, comparatively longer uh, tenure product. So it may be uh, useful for him to invest in ELSS as an option. As far as uh, NPS is concerned, potentially it can save tax up to another additional 50,000, but that is not something that I'm going to uh, recommend to him at this point in time. Uh, it may be a much better idea for him to re uh, redo a portion of his uh, FD into debt uh, mutual funds rather than looking at any other option at this time. ELSS probably is a good option. NPS is uh, not. 
All right. So ELSS and debt funds should be the one uh, Mr. Bhaskaran should be looking at. We have with us our next caller. Hari Krishna is joining us on the phone line. Uh, good afternoon, Hari. What's your question? Uh, good afternoon, ma'am. This is Hari Krishna from uh, Vishakhapatnam. Uh, actually, I'm having some FD, sir, which are now the rate of interest are going down every month on month. So I want to invest my deposit for a long term of 10 years mm -hmm. uh, in any mutual fund. This is the first time I'm investing in any mutual fund. Kindly advise me what to do. All right. So you want to know if you invest for 10 years, what kind of corpus will you get, right? Yeah, what type of invest returns I'll get, around 10% or 11% approximately. All right. Um, so, Suresh, what would you advise uh, Mr. Krishna to do? Yeah. Uh, see, as far as uh, mutual funds are concerned, to answer broadly, I mean, it can give, a, give you uh, maybe 11, 12% kind of returns. Uh, the most important thing that you have to focus on, uh, I am very happy that you are uh, giving a time frame of something like 10 years. See, equity mutual funds actually work over the long period of time. If you look at the Sensex return, it has given 16-17% return over the past 35 years. So that gives an indication of what kind of returns you can expect. And in your case, if you are going to invest, let us say, 20,000 uh, 20, rupees per month for the next 10 years, you would potentially end up with a corpus of something like uh, 47 lakhs. And if you uh, invest uh, 25,000 rupees for the next 10 years, uh, you will potentially end up with something like 57 lakhs. So this is assuming a 12% return. But uh, the only thing I would uh, like to tell you, Hari, is that I mean you are only 43 and potentially you have maybe 25 years uh, more to retirement. So if that is the case, I would suggest uh, that you should consider a much longer period of uh, investment because ultimately all of us uh, require a huge amount of money for retirement. And of course, you may have other goals uh, coming in between. So it's a it's a good idea for you uh, to consider uh, keeping this investment on for a long period of time. The only other additional suggestion that I would also give you is that you should uh, uh, you should increase the investment uh, over time. The instruments which I would suggest for you would be uh, large cap, multi cap, and balanced funds uh, uh, in an appropriate uh, allocation. It all depends on your uh, risk profiling itself. Right, and you feel that uh, for somebody like Mr. Krishna, he can do a 40% in large cap, 40% in uh, uh, a multi cap, and perhaps uh, a 10% uh, uh, or 20% in balance funds. Correct. All right. So we're going to slip into a break at this point of time. Uh, so stay with us. We'll come back and take more queries when you come back.